Okay, one final screencast for this section here, and we're going to take the idea of integer congruence and uh, work a proof out with it. Here's a theorem that uh, doesn't seem like much, but it just gives us a chance to play with this idea. So if m and n are integers, and both m and n are congruent to 1 modulo 2, then mn plus 7 is congruent to 0 mod 2. So uh, let's uh, set up a no-show table. Here we go. And uh, this is, a, again, a conditional statement, so let's begin with the hypothesis and the second step would be the conclusion and just try to fill in the blank. So we're trying to sh we're, we're going to assume the first line in this because it's a direct proof is going to be to assume the hypothesis. And the hypothesis is that uh, m and n are integers that m is congruent to 1 mod 2 and n is congruent also to 1 mod 2. Okay, and that's our first line, that's a hypothesis, and the final line down here, the conclusion, is going to be that m times n plus 7, let me parenthesize that for clarity, is going to be congruent to 0 mod 2, and again, we don't really know exactly how that's going to happen, probably by definition or something like that. So we have our hypothesis stated and our conclusion written out, let's uh, do either a forward or a backward step. Uh, why don't we try forward this time? So step P1. What we're going to do is just reinterpret what this means here. Okay, we have really two statements that m is congruent to 1 mod 2 and n is congruent to 1 mod 2. So what does it mean to say m is congruent to 1 mod 2? Well that means that 2 divides the difference between m and 1. And uh, likewise 2 divides the difference between n and 1. Okay, and that's the definition of uh, congruence mod 2. I'm going to horribly abbreviate that over here in this column here. So by the definition of congruence mod 2, we're just going to unpack what these two statements right here mean using divisibility. Now let's unpack that a little farther. Okay, um, This divisibility statement in turn can be written as if 2 divides m minus 1, that means that m minus 1 is equal to 2 times k for some integer k. Uh, I'll just put that in parentheses. The k here is an integer. And also, likewise, n minus 1 is equal to 2 times, let's call it L, uh, for some L in the, in the integers. Okay, L is an integer. Okay, and that's by the definition of divisibility. Okay, so we've unpacked kind of in two stages here. The congruence can unpack to a divisibility statement, and the divisibility statement unpacks to an equality statement about multiplication. So that's kind of nice. Now, let's, uh, it's kind of hard to know necessarily what to do here unless we look at the bottom. So let's uh, kind of continue to unpack here by making a backwards step. What we're eventually going to say is that mn plus 7 is congruent to 0 mod 2. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that 2 divides the difference between mn plus 7 and 0. Normally I would write mn plus 7 minus 0, but since we all know that mn plus 7 minus 0 is just mn plus 7, uh, and we don't need to write the 0. Okay, so that's going to be certainly the case. And so the last line would be true by the definition of, again, of congruence mod 2. It's by what it means to be congruent mod 2. Maybe we can make a second backward step here, because uh, if 2 divides mn plus 7, then what that would mean is that mn plus 7 is equal to 2q uh, for some q in the integers. Okay, that would, be a, that would be correct to say that. So line q1 would follow from q2. If I can only get to q2, q1 will follow uh, by definition of divisibility. Definition of divisibility. Okay, so now how am I going to get from P2 to Q2? Well, this is where things might things might look up for us because I'm trying to eventually say something about mn plus 7. Now I have m minus 1 up here and n minus 1 here. A little bit of algebra uh, will get us a long way here. Let me just add 1 to both sides of these two equations. So m is equal to 2k plus 1 and n is equal to 2, I called it L plus 1. That's just a that the S is algebra, and the algebra that I did was simply adding 1 to both sides of the equation. So now let's multiply m, let's just compute mn plus 7, right? Let's just go straight for the throat here. What is mn plus 7? Well, let's see, mn, I can make a substitution and write this as 2k plus 1, that's a plus, times 2l plus 1. 
that's the M and the N, and if I add the 7 onto it, it's just kind of hanging out there. Uh, that's by substitution. And let's do another step here. I might have to scrunch this in to get some room. This is just going to be expanding on the uh, uh, right-hand side here. That would be 4KL, okay, using the FOIL method, plus uh, <laughs> the FOIL method, the first outer. Pretty bad when I forget the FOIL method. Plus 2K plus 2L plus 1 plus 7. Okay, so that's algebra, but I'll just say FOIL method. Now let's just do uh, P6, which would be maybe just adding, so I'm sorry, this is, I said 8, that's supposed to be a 7, my bad. I got ahead of myself, because the next thing I want to do is write this as 1 plus 7. Now what I'm going to do here is actually combine a couple of steps. I'm going to, you see here I have 4KL, a 2K, a 2L, and the 1 and the 7 come together to be an 8. All of those have a factor of 2 on them, so I'm just going to factor that out, and I'll be left with a 2KL plus a 1K plus an L plus 4. Okay, and that would be, uh, let's just call it algebra, right? But really what happened is I added the 1 and the 7 together and then pulled out a 2. It's factoring. Okay, um, now there's actually one extra line I need to put in here, P7. I don't have any room for it, so I'll put it up here. Okay, P7, it would go right uh, there. And that would be to say that, see this thing in the parentheses? This is going to eventually be my Q. Okay, I've got MM plus 7, blah, 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 equals 2 times a big thing here. That's exactly what I want in line Q2 here, but I need to just verify again that this thing in parentheses is an integer. So I'm just going to say that. Here's the statement. 2KL uh, plus K plus L plus 4 is an integer. Okay, And the reason is by closure. Okay, uh, We already knew from line uh, P, the very beginning, I'm sorry, line P2, I guess, that K and L individually are integers. And so if I do all of this arithmetic to them, it's going to still have an integer. So that's line P7. And now, finally, I can connect. Okay, Q2 is going to follow because I'm just going to set, uh, I hope I have room here, Q equal to 2KL plus K plus L plus 4. The thing in parentheses, that's my Q. Okay, and then the, my backward steps have prepared the way for me to get to the end here. And so that's a completed proof here. Okay, notice the, the thing that makes this kind of different is this... Uh, double unpacking step that we did both in the front end and the back end. I started with a congruent statement. I turned the congruent statement using the definition into a divisibility statement and then the divisibility statement in turn through its definition becomes a statement about multiplication. And so now we're kind of back into regular arithmetic land here. So that's it. The completed proof, direct proof using congruence of integers.